is that we are going to be uh, talking about a bunch of different materials. And it's kind of like a current events assignment, and it's kind of not. And that can be confusing for people. So I want to make sure that you are um, hearing the, you know, that you are understanding the concepts behind the activity. So first I'm going to pull up um, the anchor assignment description. And it is the same for, all, for earth science, biology, and chemistry. So I'm just going to pull up the earth science one because that's the one I have to actually fix. Um, it says anchor two and it really isn't. So I'm going to pull that up. And I apologize for the typo. I originally had intended for it to be anchor two. Um, and uh, cooler heads prevailed and we turned it into anchor three. So, all right, so I'm going to float the containers. I will attempt to um, get, hold on just a moment. Yes, it will be recorded. Okay, I have my mics all, uh, my sound all the way up. Let me see if I can check my mic. And I apologize for having to do it this way. Unfortunately, I uh, am having some difficulty. I'm flat on my back right now. I tore a ligament in my ankle. And so I am unable to get up and move around like I normally do. So I'm really upset about that. Yeah, ouch. <laughs> it was pretty ouchy. Um, manage audio devices. Sound Mac recording. Microphone. Configure. Okay. Hopefully that will make it better. If it's not, I'll just try and talk really loud and hopefully you can hear me a little bit better. Is that any better, Gabe? Good. Okay, so I know this says Anchor 2 and I apologize for that. Everybody can see this, correct? Great. Okay. So, um, one of the things that I want to talk about on the article project, this is new for everybody. And the reason why this looks this way is because we are, and I'm closing everything else out so you can see it better, um, because we are uh, adapting to the Common Core state standards. And some of you may have heard of that, some of you, it may not be on your radar, and that's fine. Um, <clears throat> what you're going to do is you're going to pick three or more articles. Now this is in earth science, but it's just three or more articles that are related to your subject area. Okay, so what that means is for earth science, that's a huge subject area. And for those of you who listen to, to lecture one, you know it's multidisciplinary. So that could be meteorology, astronomy, um, geology, etc. Inception, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, for chemistry, there's a ton in chemistry. Engineering is, is applications. So any of the, the science and technology aspects of chemistry is great. But if you want to talk about new movements in organic chemistry, um, that's, that's cool. Um, if you want to talk about, yeah, exactly. If you want to, in biology, biology is a huge subject. It can cover medicine. It can cover, um, it can cover medicine. It can cover new discoveries in exotic species. It could be uh, climate change. It could be anything. 
I mean, there these subjects are so huge, it really lends themselves to this kind of collaborative project. And the whole point is, is that I want you to take recent articles. Um, yes, Gabe, you're right. Um, I, I want you to take recent articles, and by recent I mean since June 1st. That's why you're going to look at online journals and also like Science Daily or the, the local media. So since June 1st is the rule, because I want you to be looking at current material that is going on. Um, secondly, uh, I want you to write a paper that brings these things together. And preferably, I want you to have disparate articles. Do you guys know what I mean by disparate? Because if you don't, this is the time to ask. Okay. Disparate means that they are different in nature. So let's say you were, uh, I want you to pick disparate material. That means different in nature because what I want you to do is I want you to draw them together into something that is how you understand the subject where you are right now. Okay, so what that means is, is that, exactly, exactly, Anna. Um, what that means is, is that I want you to take, like let's say you're an earth science student and you're talking about geology and you're talking about astronomy and you're talking about meteorology and you're drawing those all together and maybe you're talking about what our plans are for future colonization on Mars. Okay, those could all be, you know, well here's how I understand these and here's how they would relate to a topic that I like. Um, so that's kind of where I want you to go with this. And I do highly encourage sarcasm. Those of you who, who have known me for any length of time, you know that I like sarcasm because it shows your thinking and you're thinking with humor. And that's always a good thing. Um, if you don't have it, don't strain for it. I mean, seriously, it's not, it's not that big a deal. That's okay. Um, but it is something that is definitely uh, one of those things that helps you to understand and convey your understanding of the material. Um, so, so those are some of the big things um, that you can do. Now I'm going to show you how to do that if you're going to do a Google search. So let me pull up Google real quick so you guys aren't looking at my grade book. So give me a quick second. Okay. Uh, yeah, no, I'm not going to violate your privacy for, for, you know, fun for others. Okay, so everybody can see Google. Give me uh, either a hands up or a yes telling me that you can see it when you can see it. Okay, Gabe can. This also tells me how fast your speed is at home for your internet. If the internet drags at your house, you'll probably hear me start to sound like, you know, Mickey Mouse or something. Okay, cool. So it looks like most of you can see it, which is awesome. I'm going to go ahead and put your hands down. Okay, so when you do a Google search, Google has some really fun stuff where you can do a news search. So you drop down here. And um, you go to the more on Google. I'll go back and show you where that was. So you go to more. And then you drop down. And you can go to news. Now here's news. Google knows I live in Idaho, so it gives me an Idaho link. But it also gives me science and health. Those are the two areas and technology where you'd really kind of want to focus your material. And so Google News Searches will, will search very quickly for a subject area that you're interested in. So let's click on science and then we're going to search science and say, um, let's say Mars. So here's the news. They want Bruno Mars. Ha ha ha, no. 
All right, so cool. I'm glad you did. Um, we're not looking up Bruno Mars, but one of let's say we were looking at Mars. And by the way, if you're interested in Mars and you're in chemistry, well, there's still stuff to be done on Mars. For example, um, I did some work with NASA over the summer, uh, some NASA researchers over the summer, <clears throat> and we were looking at certain lava flows to help them understand the geology on Mars. And one of the things that they did, uh, that they talked about, was they were not prepared for the chemistry on Mars. When they landed uh, the rover a while back, um, before the, the new Mars uh, launch, when they landed the, the first rovers and the first probes on Mars, they were not prepared for um, the fact that chlorine in Mars is primarily in a perchlorate state. Well, in, on Earth, the most common form of chlorine is chloride ions, like we, you know, sodium chloride or salt. Um, that's in our seawater. We were used to that. We were prepared for that. But Mars is completely different. And the chlorate was eating every bit of metal they had really quickly. Um, and so that's kind of where chemistry could be involved, even if you're like really into space travel or, or whatever. I don't, I, I'm just picking Mars as a, as a for instance. But you can see here, here's the, um, here's the most recent news, and you can tell when it's been published. I mean, these are three hours ago, two hours ago, 39 minutes ago. So you can see here that, that this comes up very, very quickly, and hitting news stories using Google or using Science Daily, it's going to be really easy to make sure that you're getting in since June 1st. Does that make sense to everybody? Am I going too fast? Need some feedback at this point. Okay, Jared's good. Gabe's good. Awesome. Anna, you're good. Awesome. Kylie, Tabitha, Tim. Oh, also, yeah, you could. Um, one of the coolest things ever, I'm going to show you something. Um, which I think is, is like amazingly awesome. See these little guys right here? These guys are called tardigrades or water bears. And we've done experiments on these guys in a ridiculous fashion. It's kind of interesting. Um, yeah, they don't die in, not only do they not die in space, these are arthropods. They've taken them up in space to the, like, the International Space Station and stuff and, and on the shuttle missions because they're small. They're micro arthropods. So these, these images you see are scanning electron micrographs of them. Sometimes they're colored and sometimes they're not. And they are cute. Um, they're also called um, water pigs because <laughs> of their little noses. But anyway, um, these tardigrades are really interesting because they can go into a, a problem called, no, they're not microbial, they're just very small. Um, you can see them kind of with the unaided eye, but you can't see any detail. You see a, a speck moving. But they go into a state called cryptobiosis, which means hidden life. So if you're a biology student, um, this is really cool. This is a multicellular organism that's still teeny tiny, but they've taken them up in space, and not only do they survive in the vacuum of space, and I use that term loosely, vacuum, um, not only do they survive in the vacuum of space, they can breed out there. They laid eggs, and the eggs hatched and developed normally. So, I mean, that's just like ultra cool. Um, yeah, seriously. And, and, and not only that, but, but like um, those of you who are video game players, these are what the Zorg or, <laughs> or the Zerg are based on. Um, because, the, you know, it's like if you, <laughs> thanks Angus, uh, if you guys um, have, did you guys ever watch Jurassic Park? Okay. You know how the, the mathematician, who's the chaos theory guy, who's played by, um, what's his face? 
I can't remember. Anyway, he talked about life will find a way. Well, it's totally true. Life does find a way. It's like, you know, I tell you all sorts of things in my lectures and stuff. And if you come to office hours, I'm happy to, uh, <laughs> um, if you come to office hours, I'm happy to like go on at length if you're interested in a topic and say, hey, I need to know more about this. Because all I give you in my lectures is the need to knows. All the nice to knows are still up in my head and I'm not just overwhelming you with that. But if you're ever interested in a particular um, subject, you know, by all means, come and see me. Because I'll tell you things like, well, animal cells don't have cell walls. Well, except for this one kind of animal. Or plant cells don't do this. Well, except for these three kinds of plants. So, um, they're not aquatic, but they live in like water films on moss. But if you dry them out, and they have, um, they, they have lived in a jar, completely in a dehydrated state for up to a hundred years and it's kind of like add water and they come back to life. Kind of. Water sits as a film on the surface of moss. That's actually how moss reproduce because they don't produce pollen. They produce sperm and the sperm have to swim through water to get to other moss to... Um, they're called water bears or tardigrades and you can see that in my Google search um, thing. Okay, so we got distracted with the cute water bears, but but that's kind of an example. Like, I want to be in space. I want to talk about space, but I want to talk about characteristics of life, or I want to talk about weird physiology, or I want to talk about this or that. You know, could tardigrades give us a uh, a hint toward successful, um, you know, freezing the brain and making you survive in a robot later? Maybe I don't know. Uh, you know, maybe they're the way. I mean, we've successfully frozen and regenerated a hamster. That's about the most complex thing we've ever done. Not chromostatus. It's um, cryogenesis is the name of it. So those are kind of some examples of ways that you can um, use this material to help you um, kind of draw together. So even if you're thinking about a subject that you really like, and let's say, I don't know, it could be horses for all I care. Maybe you're talking about horses. Well, did you know that there's a vet here in Idaho that developed joint replacement therapy for horses that then he made a ridiculous ton of money off of because they started using it in human surgeries? I mean, that kind of stuff is happening every day and it's even happening in Idaho which is like super cool you know everybody we've got a yeah he lives in Arco actually um, <clears throat> we've got we've got all of this stuff that we do in research every day and it's one of those things that I'm just kind of giving you a glimpse and I want you to get a glimpse on what's going on in the world of science and you can kind of take it in any direction you want. You just have to take those three articles and draw them together as a paper. You're not summarizing the articles. I will tell you that. If you start off summarizing, you're going to get hammered. because um, And the rubrics are up. Like I said, if it says Anchor 2, I'm sorry about that. It is Anchor 3. Don't worry about the Anchor number. Um, but the rubrics are up for you to take a look at. But I want to make sure that you understand you are not summarizing these articles. You're using them as evidence for your argument or your idea. Okay? So this is where two pages. And for Tabitha, since you're in earth science, yes, you need to you know, discuss your idea. It, it's not how amazing science is. You don't need to stroke my back on this. Yeah, you're going to defend a, a point. So let's say you don't like global warming and you're in science that works in any of the sciences um, so let's say you're against global warming well defend that use your articles as defense now keep in mind when you are talking about um, when you are talking about yeah it is um, Jared yes you are you are right when you are talking about things like um, if you're defending a standpoint on a particular issue that is controversial, 
back it up with more articles than just three because I'm gonna really I really do read these very very clearly and I want you to understand that because I, I don't want you to sit there and go la 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 that's pretty um, I want you to understand that I do read these I read them for accuracy I read them for whether you make sense and I'm gonna talk about the citations now um, so I'm gonna go back to sharing well it's not that hard so give a second okay so here is you should be able to see that here pretty soon this is an article that I wrote for a scientific journal back in 2005 for those of you who don't know I don't have a teaching degree I I got a degree in biology and then I got an advanced degree in physiology and so this is this is based out of my research that took me three years and then took an undergrad another three years to back up so it was a big big project but so here's what I'm talking about when I talk about internal citations if you look here you'll see that at the end I'm not quoting that article but I am using it as evidence so I put in the internal citation. It came from Stearns in 1992. Well, you're like, well, that doesn't tell me anything as far as what Stearns article we're talking about. Well, it's at the end. There's Stearns, 1992. This is where I got it from. Okay. So when you do internal citations, you always talk about, you know, you can see here I said Nelson in 1987 argued that genetic variation photo responsiveness might occur as balanced polymorphism involving life history trade-offs in which the render reproduction increased mortality basically that says that he argued that if mice tried to or any organism tried to breed during the hard times of winter then um, that increases their likelihood that they're gonna die because it's very energetically expensive. That's what I was looking at. Now, did I say anything as far as um, quoting him? No. This is my take on what he said. And that's what you're going to do. You're just going to make sure that you cite it. So my best suggestion to you is that when you are looking at these articles, the best thing you can do, yeah, the best thing you can do is, as you're looking at the article, start taking notes and say, okay, well, I'm reading this one article on like block, blockity block. So here's um, XYZ blockity block from the New York Times. Okay, so there's my citation. And obviously, that's not a complete citation. But as you go through, you're kind of evaluating whether his argument makes sense. Okay, so you can say, hey, um, he says that global warming is supported by multiple, and I know my typing is coming through really loud and clear, <clears throat> so multiple computer models. So there's my note from blockity block. And as I go through, I read it and I go, okay, that's what that means to me. And I just keep notes under the, the citation. And remember at the owl at Purdue site, and there's a link on the front page of Moodle for you to get to, but the owl at Purdue site will tell you exactly how to cite every single thing. And if you're curious, if you're, if you have a question on it, come and see me during office hours. Obviously, office hours next week won't happen because it's Thanksgiving break on Wednesday and Friday. Um, but after that, I'll be there. Okay, so if you're curious, you know, take notes and say, this is what it means to me as you go through. The biggest problem with um, your generation is that it's very, very... <laughs> you can come over to Mackie and I'll, I'll cook for you. I'm a darn good cook. Um the uh, the problem with you guys is that it's so easy to copy and paste don't do that that's your biggest um, that is your biggest difficulty 
is that if you copy and paste, you're not interpreting it. Versus if you were taking this out of a book, you'd have to write down notes. Well, it's kind of the same way. If you're writing down the notes and just putting it under a page with blockity blocks citation at the top, you know where you got that from. You've got your interpretation already written out, and then all you got to do is put it together. Yes, you'll get to go to lunch. Okay, so um, any... Does this make sense? Um, that's because your internet connection sucks, Angus. Um, <laughs> does this uh, does this make sense to everybody? Do you need me to go through any um, any other items for you? Okay, I highly recommend that you work on this. Maybe a little bit. Yes, you do have to have the citation text in MLA at the end and also inside uh, the text as you cite it, you know, as a source. I highly recommend you work on this a little bit over Thanksgiving so that you can come and see me, you know, send it to me to review. I'm not going to grade it, but I'll be happy to do that. There's your internet connection. It also tells me if you wandered off to another section. I did show you an example paper for, for how to cite, um, but I can show you an example paper for a student that has done this for me. So hang on one second, and I'll pull that up. Ah, come on. Okay, hang on, Tabitha, it's coming. I'm pulling it out of Moodle. Now this was a B-level paper, just so you are aware that I'm not showing you 100%. Yeah, that could be interesting, um, especially in the concept of human-robotic interactions. Okay, so I'm going to share this. Do, 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 do. And you probably can tell from looking at this, um, you can probably tell by looking at just the few introductory paragraphs why this was a B paper and not an A paper. What do you guys think? Where would I where would I hit this paper as far as um, lowering the grade? Exactly. No, grammar was good. Um, which, by the way, is spelled A-R. Too many words. <laughs> uh, she was summarizing. You're right. And then the internal citations are missing. So you can see that she's citing her source here, like the Journal of Heredity. But she's not putting a citation inside of it. You can see that all of these ideas look like she came up with them, and she really didn't. But I do like the also show that some mating males will go to great lengths to get to the mate uh, ladies. <laughs> okay, does that does that help you guys a little bit understand where we're going? Good. Okay, so I'm going to stop the recording at this point, and if you have any additional questions, then, yeah, Um 
then if you have any questions, I'll be happy to go over them with you individually, but it doesn't need to be on the recording. So um, give me one second. I'm going to stop the recording. And if you are ready to go, then go ahead and just click the X in the top box, and I'll be happy to see you at a later point.